Welcome back everyone, this will be my brand new Guardians of the Galaxy 3 trailer breakdown from Comic Con. It was one of the other big clips that they showed off, so if you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. There was a whole bunch of stuff, they showed off a brand new version of Adam Warlock, they showed off High Evolutionary, they even went full Loki with High Evolutionary, so Chuck Woody Wooji is playing a version of High Evolutionary, they confirmed it, we all believed it early on, so it wasn't a huge surprise. The actual surprise was during the Guardians of the Galaxy 3 panel when they went full Loki with him. He rolled in in full costume and in full character, like addressing the entire crowd as if he was actual high evolutionary. Call me Saya. Oh, okay. I'm pleased to be here. As I gaze out at this crowd, I am reminded of my sole purpose in the universe. To take unevolved, disgusting, low-life scum such as yourselves <laughs> and enhance you genetically to something less reprehensible. <laughs> Thank you for inspiring me with how vomitous you all are. The, the, the bile in the back of my throat as I look at you is all the motivation I need to move forward and create the perfect species. They did confirm that he's going to be the person who created Rocket because he appears in the trailer they show you Rocket's origin story. I've done several videos about this before, they even had an easter egg for him during Guardians of the Galaxy 2 sort of foreshadowing that they would be doing him during Guardians 3. But the trailer footage just confirmed a lot of our theories. It High Evolutionary will be the main villain of the film. Like Guardians of the Galaxy movies are all about bad space dads. You have Thanos, you have Ego the Living Planet, now you have High Evolutionary, who's basically like Rocket's bad dad. The other big reveal they made was that Maria Bakalova is going to be playing a version of Cosmo in Guardians 3. We saw a version of Cosmo in Guardians 1, but James Gunn said that, that one, they didn't have enough money and they were already doing so many weird characters on the Guardians team, he didn't want to also have a talking dog in addition to a talking raccoon and a talking tree. So that's why Cosmo was only an easter egg in the collector's collection at the end of the film. This time it sounds like Cosmo is going to be a much bigger character. And her origin story also might be tied to Rocket's origin story, like she also might have been modified by the High Evolutionary as well. And that's why she might be able to talk. The trailer starts with the Guardians of the Galaxy after the events of Thor Love and Thunder, after a short time jump, after they left Thor because there were so many random distress calls coming from all across the universe. All those different signals weren't meant to be just from Gore the God Butcher's attacks, but they left to go pursue what they felt like was the most important disaster that needed their help, and Thor then left on his own to go see what happened to Sif. So the first scene in the trailer is happening way after that, like after they've already saved a bunch more random people and these other signals that they detected. They've set a new appointment to meet the new leader of the Ravagers organization. They're on their ship, the Benatar. It gets attacked and disabled, and they pull up on this giant other ship, which is like the Ravagers' main ship during the events of the movie. They open the airlock, all the Ravagers pull weapons on them, though they're getting ready to shoot them on sight, and Peter Quill has to try and calm them down, like, we're one of you, don't shoot us, don't shoot us, we're also Ravagers as well. It doesn't help, and then Nebula steps forward and says, we're here to see Gamora, and it just blows Peter Quill's mind, like he had no idea that the new, younger version of Gamora from 2014 has become the new leader of the Ravagers since Avengers Endgame. So now as of present day, she's like badass space pirate Queen Gamora at the beginning of the movie. Then as you see Peter Quill's mind being blown, you see Gamora walk through the Ravagers on their side of the airlock, saying they're early. She does look like she has a few extra city vials on her, like she looks a little bit different than you last saw her during Avengers Endgame. Her hair's a little bit longer, it's a little more unkempt, and she has a new Ravagers jacket, kind of like the Ravagers jacket you saw Nebula wearing during Thor Love and Thunder. Then the flaming lip song, Do You Realize, kicks in and plays across the rest of the entire trailer as the camera pushes in on Peter Quill's reaction to Gamora. The standard Marvel Studios logo comes up and plays, and because they haven't released their next big movie or Disney Plus series yet, it was the same version that you saw during Thor Love and Thunder with like a little bit of Miss Marvel footage, a little bit of Moon Knight, and a little bit of Doctor Strange 2 footage in it. But then they did the same thing with the logo that they did during the Black Panther Wakanda Forever trailer, where like everybody is now getting their custom version of the logo for each new movie and Disney Plus series. So the traditional Marvel Studios intro that you would expect to see transitions to like the custom Guardians of the Galaxy 3 version. And it's like a white design fading into red with the letters in the backdrop against what looks like wood. And the logo itself has this kind of distressed weathered look as if it's chipping off like paint. I think the wood is meant to represent the wood of Groot's body. They show some new panning shots of the Guardians of the Galaxy starting with Peter Quill. 
He starts talking to the new Gamora, saying that she was everything to him, and they show a flashback scene to the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, with them dancing on Ego the Living Planet. You see the new Gamora kind of reacting to him, telling her all these things. There's a separate scene of Peter Quill wearing a helmet, telling the new Gamora that he misses her, and she responds by saying, that other Gamora wasn't me. Then you see a completely different scene of all the Guardians of the Galaxy getting ready to jump out the airlock, wearing a bunch of spacesuits, and all the spacesuits are actually the colors of the Infinity Stones, with one exception, like there's no purple, but there's a blue, yellow, orange, green, red. They jump out the hatch towards this giant structure, and this might be a version of MCU Half-World, because so much of the movie deals with High Evolutionary and Rocket's origin story, and Rocket comes from Half-World inside the MCU. They start transitioning to the Guardians of the Galaxy 3 custom lettering style saying directed by James Gunn and then there's a new scene of Nebula looking up at that structure and then they flash the new Guardians of the Galaxy 3 logo that looks like this in front of her on the surface. So they make it look as if Nebula is looking at the new Guardians 3 title and the title itself transitions to the custom language that you saw in the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie like this custom alien language but it still says Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. There's a new scene of Mantis walking through their ship, and then there's a rocket raccoon flashback scene to his origin story with a hand reaching out and touching a very small baby version of Rocket. This is probably the High Evolutionary's hand getting ready to modify him and enhance him with his cybernetic parts so that he can talk and walk around on two legs. Like it's a very scared, tiny little baby version of Rocket sitting on all fours. He looks like a regular raccoon would look. He doesn't have any of his cybernetic parts yet. They show you the back of the High Evolutionary's head with his special suit. His full suit looks like this, like they show you his face right after this, but this is what he looks like in broad daylight. A Little bit different from the comic book version, like he doesn't have the face plate like he does in the comics. In the comics, he actually started life as a normal human called Herbert Wyndham and then eventually became the High Evolutionary. His origin story in the MCU might be a little bit different, like he looks humanoid, but I don't know if they're going to say that he used to also be a human from Earth. His comic book origin story, interestingly enough, is actually connected to Scarlet Witch's origin story too. We'll see if there's any Easter eggs for that in the future of the MCU. He used to have a base that was in Mount Wundegor that was connected to what was going on with Cthone, the God of Chaos, Chaos Magic, Scarlet Witch's origin story. I'm not completely expecting all those connections with this version of the character though. They show you High Evolutionary's lab with all of his tools that look really wicked that he uses to upgrade Rocket and his other creations. There have been a lot of behind the scenes shots of other animalistic looking characters that look more humanoid now that were also probably modified by the High Evolutionary. Like we'll see a bunch of other creations kind of like Rocket, but they'll all be different types of animals and different types of people that he's upgraded. They show you a first look at Will Poulter as Adam Warlock. This is what he looks like. Notice how he's got his own special suit given to him by the Sovereign. He's also got a gem inside his forehead like the comics, but it's not the Soul Stone like the comics. It's just a gold looking gem that's the same color as the gold of his skin. But the really cool connection between Adam Warlock and High Evolutionary, which they're both doing in the movie, is that High Evolutionary in the comics is the one who gave Adam Warlock the soul gem in his forehead. Originally he didn't have that, and he did that in order to help Adam Warlock fight Man Beast, and it looks like a character in the movie is playing a version of Man Beast. So even though the plot of the movie will be different from those comic book stories, they're doing some Easter eggs for that. James Gunn didn't reveal what was going on with this new gemstone, but it's probably just like what they did with White Vision giving him the new control crystal in his forehead that was not the soul gem, like it was intended to replace the soul gem. The one that they gave to White Vision was just intended to be like a focusing crystal that he used for attacks. It's probably a similar situation with Adam Warlock's gem. It's probably just another weapon that he can use or something that he can use to amass more power. Overall, he looks great. I wasn't sure what to expect, but this actually looks pretty fantastic. There's a couple quick shots of the new version of Gamora. There's another new character that doesn't look familiar, but he also looks like he's been upgraded by the High Evolutionary. You see what looks like a regular suburban street on Earth. It might be a flashback to Peter Quill's childhood because all the cars look like they're from the 80s. You see a new version of Peter Quill, Drax, and the other Guardians wearing the traditional Guardians costumes from the Annihilation Conquest comic book run. That was the run where this MCU version of the team came together for the first time, but when they did the first Guardians movie, James Gunn kind of changed the story of how they came together. So this is them just going back to that comic book deep cut. There's a fight scene with Peter Quill wearing that new comic book accurate suit, going back to back with Groot firing their weapons. Obviously Groot doesn't fire weapons, like he just grows his parts. It looks like Groot starts out being the same height as Peter Quill, but then in the middle of their fight grows bigger and bigger and bigger. So I think that's them just teasing that he will grow back to his full size in the movie. Vin Diesel calls him Alpha Groot, like the most version of Groot. Because then it zooms in on Groot's face and his face seems like it gets older, more mature, and bigger than it seemed during Thor Love and Thunder. 
There's a couple other scenes of the Guardians of the Galaxy in their Infinity Stone colored suits flying towards that new half world structure. They show you a new scene of the same type of creature from the beginning of Guardians of the Galaxy 2 with the tentacles, the rows of teeth getting ready to attack. There's a couple flashes to scenes with other Guardians like Nebula, Mantis, all crying, going crazy. And then it ends with Peter Quill talking to the new version of Gamora about opening yourself up and the idea of family in general. Like he's slowly trying to win over this version of Gamora back to the family, so to speak. They also said a big part of the movie will be the Nebula and Gamora story because the whole idea in the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie was Gamora trying to save her sister because her sister Nebula was still kind of drinking the Thanos Kool-Aid. Now it's kind of flipped in reverse and Nebula is the one who's trying to save Gamora. Because it's coming out in May next year, we'll probably get the first trailer by like the end of this year, then probably some more trailers when Ant-Man 3 Quantumania comes out because it's like the next film after Ant-Man Quantumania. James Gunn also revealed that this was the last Guardians of the Galaxy MCU movie with this roster of the team. So in the comics, I think the whole idea is that they just cycle the roster. The Guardians of the Galaxy as a group will continue, but some of the characters will die, some of them will continue, and they'll cycle in new characters. Really good example of that is Adam Warlock, now in the MCU, really OP character. In the comics, eventually he joins a version of the Guardians of the Galaxy. I think they might do that in the movies. But everyone post all your theories in the comments below. If you spotted any Easter eggs in the trailer footage that I didn't talk about in the video, just write it below in the comments. I've done a couple big videos about Marvel Phase 5 movies, Marvel Phase 6, Avengers 5, Avengers 6. I'll put links for that down in the description below so you can learn all about that stuff. Everyone click here for my full Black Panther Wakanda Forever trailer video and Easter eggs. And click here for my brand new Ant-Man 3 trailer and Avengers 5 Easter eggs. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.